Hi, my name is Colbert and let's start this Steam Winter Sale video with Terminator Resistance. It has 92% of positive reviews on Steam, so it's almost a masterpiece. Emphasis on almost. This is a first-person shooter set during the future war scenario that was only glimpsed in the first two iconic movies. Basically, here you will run and gun or sneak and hack through Skynet's defenses, level up your skills and explore a post-apocalyptic world for scraps to trade and craft, also interact with other survivors and change their fates. Game has pretty good enemy AI. For example, when alerted, Terminators will bash doors, look into vents, and so on, and they will find you and blast your brains all over the walls, except if you blast their nuts and bolts first. Most people are recommending to buy it for the full price without any doubt, so now it's really good time to get it. Also, in this game you can have sex? With robots? I don't know, you will find out. Desperados 3. Here you can kill quietly with a knife or take out multiple foes with your revolvers. I especially like the knife part, it somehow feels more epic. Probably a relic memory from playing Counter-Strike 20 years ago. Yeah, that game is really old by now. Scenarios Desperados presents are far from cliché. Situations are quite original, but also familiar with a nice vibe of Wild West. I say vibe because here you will fight not only in small frontier towns, but also in creepy swamps, riverbanks and even in sprawling modern cities. Here you can choose between non-lethal and deadly attacks, meaning that you can finish the game without killing anyone. I have no idea why you may do that, it's boring. I live my real life without killing anyone. Why should I do the same where I am allowed to snap a neck or two? For example, I am against hunting for fun, but I play the hunter and I slaughter all the animals in the forest for pure entertainment. You know why? Because they are not real, duh! Anyway, Desperados 3 is like an old good Commandos game, but modern with amazing visuals and great quality overall. Ultra kill. Although the game looks simple, almost too simple, it's in ninth place by review score on the whole Steam, with more than 50,000 games. It's ridiculous how good this game is. Ultra kill is a fast-paced, ultra-violent, old-school first-person shooter that fuses together classic shooters like Quake and modern shooters like Doom Eternal with character action games like Devil May Cry. Mankind has gone extinct and the only beings left on Earth are machines fueled by blood. And now that blood is starting to run out on the surface and machines are racing to the depths of hell in search for more. As people on Steam describe this game politely, this is a Doom Eternal if it was on crack and also on heroin. And I would add that playing this game is like eating potato salad. Except if you dry it out and then snort it. Journey. This is a very different game if you compare it to anything else in the gaming world. You will have to traverse the desert to learn the fate of ancients and dive into dangerous ruins. Or not dangerous, just beautiful. You can't fight here. Running away is also not an option. If you encounter an enemy, the only way for you to survive is to hide. But don't worry, this is not some hide and seek game. Enemies are very rare. The thing you will do mostly here is traveling. You will be on a journey. It's a relaxing game. You don't need almost any skills to finish. It. It's just a beautiful adventure with amazing visuals and you have all my recommendations. Imagine that, my mother is 65 years old and she finished Journey on her PlayStation 4 without any help from a side. This game suits everyone. Dishonored 2 and Prey Bundle both Prey and Dishonored 2 are really cheap right now, but if you buy them together you save an additional 19%. Which is not a lot, but I can without any guilty conscience recommend you both games. Those are story-rich, first-person adventures that will keep you entertained for hours and hours. Prey is a sci-fi shooter that is very similar to Half-Life. Here you'll be fighting aliens by using innovative weapons. And Dishonored 2 is a proud member of a whale punk genre. Yeah, I don't think there is anything else significant made in this dystopian setting where energy is being produced by burning whale fat. What if they run out of whales, you may ask? It's probably impossible. The human population must be really small for this to even begin to work in the first place. King Arthur Night's Tale it is a role-playing tactical game, a kind of unique hybrid between turn-based games like XCOM and traditional character-centric RPGs. Here you'll find diverse battle maps where you'll have to position yourself to avoid shield walls, flank your enemies, use covers against archers, make use of the terrain, hide in the foliage and surprise your enemies with your endless wisdom. The campaign of Night's Tale puts a huge emphasis on moral choices, which have significant consequences in a roguelite structure. This adds extra attention to the tactical and management decisions, meaning that your characters are expendable and if they die they will stay dead forever. Also here, along with smashing monsters, you will have to build up Camelot Fortress and unlock new upgrades for your knights. 
Soma. This is one of the best story games I have ever played. Here you'll explore an abandoned, isolated underwater facility full of scary things where you must find a way out. It's really hard to talk about Soma without spoiling the story, but in general you will spend a lot of time in confined spaces filled with spooky monsters. You have no guns, no means of self-defense are available in this game, you can only hide, or run, or die. If you played Amnesia, it's kinda the same, just in science fiction setting really reminds me of Alien Isolation as well. Although Soma has a better plot it's like playing a novel or short story. You are not just wandering in the dark, all scared, all alone. No, you are wandering there for a reason, but you don't know what that reason is yet. And I can only guess that the ending of this game will surprise you. It surprised me, that's for sure. Gears Tactics this game easily stands in one line with XCOM titles in a sense of quality and provided entertainment. Great graphics, cinematics and really interesting encounters had me pinned on my chair for hours and hours. Usually when I install turn-based games I get bored really quickly, either because the game seems too simple, too boring or it's just too hard for me. That's what she said. Yeah, but Gears Tactics is in the perfect Goldilocks zone in terms of difficulty and fun, and it kept my interest alive for hours. I can assure you that the quality of this game is as high as possible but I have to stress out that I almost never play games that are entirely turn-based. Well, with some exceptions like Heroes of Might and Magic, so I'm not an expert in this field by any means. Anyway, for me, this game rocks and rolls and is great in general, like the best doctor sausage in the juiciest potato salad. Homeworld Remastered and Deserts of Karag Bundle. A 93% discount is not what you see every day. Imagine that something is discounted like that in the real world, let's say potatoes or beer, it would be gone from the store in a few seconds. You would buy things with a discount like that even if you don't really need them. Square wheels with 93% discount? Take them all. Rubber ducks in the shape of giraffe? Yes, please. 93% discount on penis growing kit? Sure, give me two. W why two? You have only one. It's cheap, shut up! So, that is the trick here, to make you buy these amazing games actually, even if you aren't planning to play them straight ahead. You know, this price is a steal and homeworld games are actually very entertaining. You must play for every RTS fan. Inscription this is a COD-based odyssey that blends the deck-building roguelike, escape room-style puzzles and psychological horror into a blood-infused cocktail. You'll acquire a deck of woodland creature cards by draft, surgery and self-mutilation, unlock the secrets lurking behind the walls of a mysterious cabin and embark on an unexpected and deeply disturbing adventure. So don't play this game with your underage kids or something. Anyway, overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam are well-deserved, this game is a real gem. Also, if you are in doubt, you can play the free demo version. Oxygen not included. You'll find that scarcities of oxygen, warmth and sustenance are constant threats to your colony's survival. Guide colonists through the perils of subterranean asteroid living and watch as their population grows until they are not simply surviving but thriving. Everything in your space colony is under your control, from excavation and resource allocation right down to plumbing and power systems. Resources will begin depleting with your first breath, so be sure to dig fast if you want to live. Siberia, the world before. The game consists of two parts. In the first one, you will play as a girl who is beginning a brilliant career as a pianist. However, shadows begin to appear over the future at the dawn of the Second World War. And the next part of the story will take action to a year of 2004, where you play as a girl imprisoned in the salt mine, when a tragic event propels you into a new adventure in search of your identity. So here you will play in both timelines and explore a fantastic and poetic world with amazing sceneries. One thing I can say for sure, this game is beautiful. Of course, not as beautiful as you, my friend, but still, looking very good. The art direction is at the top level and that alone should spike your interest in this adventure game with a great story, especially if you like to solve some complicated puzzles and not crack hardest riddles. Oh yeah, sadly, the game is not for the weak, it will squeeze your brain power quite well. And all that is accompanied with a symphonic soundtrack composed by Ainon Zur. You probably know his tracks from Siberia 3, Fallout, Dragon Age and Prince of Persia. Also, you can try the demo version for free on Steam. Ghostwire Tokyo 
Here the city is overrun by deadly supernatural forces after 99% of the population just vanished. You will use a powerful arsenal of spectral abilities to fight the paranormal threat and unravel the mystery behind the mass disappearance. It may sound and look a bit like a horror game, but the main emphasis is set not on the horror, but on the fast-paced gameplay, where you use your powerful abilities and can fight various ghosts like a true ghost buster, or more like ghost eliminator, because you kill them, duh. How can you kill somebody who's already dead? Oh, shut up, it's not a science game. And seriously, the game has a rating that allows 12-year-olds to play, so grow your mental balls and dive in. Wilder Myth Again, overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. Wilder Myth is a character-driven, procedurally generated tactical RPG. Like the best tabletop role-playing experiences, Wilder Myth gives you choices and answers your every decision with consequences that drive your characters forward. The best thing here is that all your heroes die someday. Yeah, that is probably not the best thing to be honest, but here you actually get to hold on your favorite heroes, reintroduce them into the next adventure, and over many lifetimes you create your own legendary pan. Theon. This game is truly great. Slay the Spire. Almost 100,000 people are recommending this game for you, and so do I. Slay the Spy is a fuse of card games and roguelike titles. Here you can craft a unique deck, encounter bizarre creatures, and discover relics of immense power while trying to climb the ladder. Game features a dynamic deck building, so assemble your deck wisely. Discover hundreds of cards to add to your deck with each attempt at climbing the spire. Select the cards that work together to efficiently dispatch foes and reach the top. People on Steam are talking that Slay the Spy is really addictive, and yeah, I'm seeing a lot of hours played in the comment section. 200 is quite a casual number here, so this is another game that will keep your virginity safe and sound for a long time. Card Shark something really refreshing this time. Card Shark is an adventure game full of cunning, intrigue, and delectable deceit. Enter a world where you need to play your opponents better than you play your cards. For example, when I play cards, I always cheat. For me, not winning is not an option. That's why I never play cards with strangers. You know, I avoid getting shot. But in this game, everything is way more serious. You will have to cheat your way to the top of 18th century French society. Master deceptions using card marking full false chouffles, deck switching, false deals, and more. Use your ill-gotten gains to buy your way into the closed world of high stakes, or even to a table of a king himself. And yeah, please don't get caught while cheating a king. So if you like this video, there is another. Click on it and you will enjoy even more short reviews of the games I have made specifically for this Steam Winter Sale event. Also, subscribe, you know that you like it here. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!